last time we did the uh, grouse nipper to brickwork and when we was having a look at it I mentioned that I wasn't too happy with a bit of brickwork in the middle and I decided we we're going to put a door in and in this video I shall show you how just to make a very standard door and door frame okay to make this door we're going to need a few basic things to start off with is I've got a block of foam you can use polystyrene as long as it's flat that's the main thing a flat piece of foam uh, the second item you're going to need is well you're going to need some sort of template for your door now this little template is I already had a one uh, yeah a 135th scale door which I just photocopied and this is what I actually use to make my doors up but yeah if you haven't got that uh, if you actually you can draw this out because it's only 55 millimeters high by 29 millimeters wide so you can draw just a little square and use it that way the second thing you're going to need is I'll get it out of the box is a piece of cling film which you put over your template I'll just sorry about that and move it off the camera so I can get it round use a piece of cling film over the top of your template now this does two things one it holds your template in place and two when you're assembling your door and you're using wood glue it doesn't stick to the paper and get yourself into a right mess and believe me I've done it and it's not pretty it really isn't so that's what you need to do next next thing uh, materials okay go on to materials uh, this is a, just a piece of balsa wood the sheet it is one mil thick now this will be actually used for the actual door itself and we'll be actually cutting these down to a five mil strip to make the door uh, panels the next thing you need is it's all going to be five mil it's five mil by 1.75 thickness uh, strip and that is for your uh, back supports to the door the next piece is for the actual door frame which you need to it needs to be thicker and this bit is it's still 5 mil again it's 5 mil by 3 mil so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut uh, about four or five strips off that at five mil thickness. What I normally do is use a five mil strip, put it on, mark it, and cut it. Now you don't really need me need to see me cutting them up because uh, you should be quite averse on uh, cutting a straight line with a ruler. So I should go and cut them up, and we'll get set up, and I shall show you how to assemble the door. Right. Uh, the first thing we need to do is create a working edge using a couple of pieces of uh, balsa wood I've cut and also going indoors and stealing some uh, dressmaking pins off the good lady is to create a working edge now excuse the big fingers in the way and now you can understand the reason for the foam board. I'm having a hard job to see this. The simple reason is I moved it because the camera picks up too much of the glare off the, uh, the cling film. And I moved it and now I've got the glare in my eyes. So I can't see really 100%. So we put one piece across the top and then we put one piece down this far side right got it so 
that's one piece across the top, one piece down this far side. Now that's giving you a working edge, and that's going to keep everything square. Now, I've already cut all my pieces to length, my lengths for the door. What I do suggest you do is get your sanding stick and just take the edge when you can hold it. Just take the edge off the front of both sides of the plank and make sure that side faces downwards into your little bit like that. Right, and we get some glue. Uh, I'm not going to shark it now. You know what, how to glue things. I can't, I shouldn't be, shouldn't be telling you how to glue something. So just run a piece of glue right down the edge and then we start making up your door like so. So we'll just run through these. Got dust everywhere now. And to be honest with you, it doesn't really take a great deal of time to actually do it. Uh, making these doors is more time spent waiting for the wood glue to dry. Keep going, putting one after each other. You may have noticed that the bottom isn't that level. I'm not too bothered about the level at the bottom. The simple reason is by the time I've finished weathering this door, there's not going to be much bottom left to this door uh, because uh, this is going to be made to look rotten, old and uh, on the verge of falling down. Now, I'm gonna stop there for the simple reason is we have got uh, a bit more to go, but it means cutting one down. And to be totally honest with you, uh, this door size is a standard door. And what we're actually working on, we're working on like a farmyard one. I'll tell you what, no, we will go the extra one. We'll make it uh, quite wide because uh, farmyard ones would probably would be slightly wider uh, getting things in and out we'll go with a full hog okay right we've got to that bit there get your pins just push into the side to hold it all in place now when you start doing that if it pushes up in the middle just get a pin and push it in the middle just to hold it all down now we're going to leave that to dry and uh, then I'll come back to you. Okay, this is all nice and dry now. So we'll take these pins out of the side, but we're still going to leave it attached to the uh, foam for the moment. Now, I've already cut some pieces to be glued in as the back supports. Uh, there's going to be one center, right where that pin is, and one at the top. Now I'm going to set them down roughly about 5 mil. so I should just use a piece of wood and set them down like that. So I'm going to get these glued and then I'll come back and we'll move on to the next bit. Okay, uh, I've glued these three pieces on, as you can see. The bit I didn't mention was that I cut them just slightly short, uh, the width of a piece of uh, 1.75 this is going to be uh, a door stop so and if you put the door stop on the frame the door wouldn't actually close with these right to the edge so I thought sorry about that I meant to put, uh, say as I was going along but there's that many things going on in my head the other thing that I've cut as well are the two little struts that go in like so which I'm not going to glue in and uh, you'll see the reason for that later on so I've cut them and I'll put them to one side and now what we can do is we can take away uh, these 
working bits and we can now start thinking about making the frame uh, I've already cut some of the 3 mil by 5 mil to make a little frame up like so so that just needs gluing at the top we don't need to glue this all the way down because we want me to get the door out so with a few pins when I find them put the top piece in just put a couple of pins in to hold it into place so that he knocks it out Few pins in, and then just glue the ends. Tiny bit of glue on the end to actually make your frame up. Like I say, don't need a lot of glue because we don't want to be sticking things all together. Uh, don't worry about the top bits, they can easily be cut off uh, when it's dry. Balsa wood is fantastic, very easy, uh, sandable, and uh, modeler friendly, as I call it. Now, excuse the big hands, but we will stick a few pins just along this edge just to hold things in place while it dries. down that edge and we'll also put one at the bottom and then we'll push one just in there and just in there and also what we need to do is we need to get a small piece of wood and we need to glue it across the bottom here because once we take the door out it's going to be sort of flapping around and we need it to be reasonably stable so we can actually get it glued into the hole that we cut in the little uh, outhouse so just a little piece of wood across the bottom there that will hold it all together and it will be very easy just to uh, dispose of that when we're ready find something just to press that down with All right, uh, we shall leave that to dry now and then we'll come back and we'll take that off and we'll put a door strip in that side as well and uh, clean it up and that door will be finished right it's all dried I have taken a few of the pins out for the simple reason was I needed to make sure that door was uh, loose we'll take the rest of the pins out excuse the big hands I'll move that out of the way for a second take them two pins out And there we have one very nice little door. Well, I think that's okay. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. We'll just trim up the bottom. Well, we don't really need to trim the bottom up because uh, this is going to be made to look like it's virtually falling apart. So. I'm not too fussed about the bottom. The only thing I've got to do now is just put a thin strip, put your hands in the way, I put a thin strip down that side just to make the door uh, stop. And we've got these little pieces and you should see uh, what I will do with them on the weathering. And that's what I'll be doing next. Uh, I'll be doing, I'll be showing you my basic 
my base weathering should I say is what I do before I put things in so then I can do the actual weathering on it so that that will be next uh, and like I say thank you very much for joining me I hope uh, you sort of understood it all as, as I went through if there was anything you didn't understand just ask a question I'll answer it so thank you very much and we'll see you on the next one